Done. So it, you may have to hit a got it um, in order for it, for you to stay in this meeting. So if you have a little thing that pops up, just hit got it or okay. All right. Okay, so Marlene, did you want to talk about the state fair? <laughs> I have seven people for sure. And then I, Svetlana, I can never say her name. Svetlana. Svetlana. She, said she would stay all day if she wanted. <laughs> okay. And so eight. And so I still got five tickets that I can hand out for people to come and sit for two hours and then go have fun at the fair. <laughs> yeah. So, so, and again, remind us of the date, Marlene. Is it August 30th? August 30th. And the building's open from nine to nine, but I think we're going to leave at seven just for safety. Yeah, I've started. done this before. It's actually pretty fun to to sit in the creative arts building and you know talk to people, and you bring a few of your own pieces and then something to work on, and and it is it is kind of a fun time. So we still need more people. So so check with Marlene. Um, you know, either chat with her now, or you can on the website you can see her email address. Um, and then also you're still looking for displays for the state fair. Uh, um, I missed what. Uh, Rochelle said, how many do you have at Bobby Beach so far? Um, five or six. Okay. I have one, Becky has one, so that's it. And didn't pieces. Rita already give you one? Yeah, that's the one. That's the one I oh. got. Oh, okay. So then I have five more at Bobby Bead. Okay. And um, more, I'm sure, will be showing up. So if you don't get to Marlene, you can drop off your um state fair piece to bobby bead and we will give it to her if that's more convenient for any member and, and the cutoff is august 19th to have it at bobby bead and also you have my email address wrong you have it dot com and it's dot net uh okay i'll check that so it's morris the cat 22 at comcast dot net okay so if anybody wants to contact me and let me know if they can work that's great. We will take you. <laughs> hey, can you put All that? Right. Give me that again. Um, I'll just stick it in the chat too. It's Morris, the cat, right? Somebody already had it, so I had to add numbers. So it's Morris the cat twenty two at Comcast dot net. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm just sticking that in the in the in the chat for everybody. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay. And Hannah, do you want to talk about um, your class at the at the bead retreat? Well, let's talk about the bead retreat first. Yeah. Uh, we already, you know, and then we can talk about my class. So why don't you tell people a little bit about the retreat itself? So, so the bead retreat is, let me get the dates right. I believe it's September 26th through the 30th. It's a Wednesday through Sunday. It's the 20th through the... The 20th through the 24th. Thank you. Um, and uh, uh, you can come for one day, you can come for multiple days. There are, um, the, the rooms are set up with four beds. Um, they're bunk beds, but we only do bottom beds. <laughs> we don't want anybody crawling on the top bunk. Um, and each, each room has its own bathroom and shower and everything. Um, the meals are included. They're uh, morning, uh, a breakfast and an evening meal and everybody brings snacks. So there's always plenty to eat. Um, it's a lovely time, and uh, we're going to have Hanna um, doing her class on on Thursday of that of that um, a, a period. She'll talk about that, and then we're we're looking at a couple of other instructors as well to teach. So more information will be out probably in the next week on the website, and we'll send out a notice as well. Great, Doris, are you going to be setting up a shop? Yes, I will be setting up shop, but I get home from a month out of town two days before, so I won't be doing <laughs> a whole lot, but maybe sleeping. So I don't know if there's a class for me, it'll be an impromptu one. Oh, sounds good. And the, the workspace overlooks the lake, and so it's really well lit and a great place 
to bounce and you can ideas off each other. Up just for the day. You don't have to stay overnight. Yeah. That's also part of the fun. We just go up for breakfast, take the class, you know, maybe take a walk for the lunch. It's beautiful in the fall. The colors are great. And um, so, yeah, so if you can't stay overnight, it is a wonderful day retreat as well. Um, mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, and Hannah? You betcha. So I'm going to be teaching a full day uh, advanced bead embroidery class where I'm going to begin teaching uh, gold work and also some tambour bead embroidery. I'll show you the piece and then I'll show you a better photo of the piece. So this is the piece that I made for it. Uh, it's a maple leaf. Uh, is that in focus and, and in the screen? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can either, it's got a back that's either a pendant or a brooch, but I'm betting Rochelle's going to turn it into a hair dewy again. <laughs> <Got it. laughs> so, and I think this will look great on your hair. Um, mm -hmm. uh, let me show you share screen. I've got a photo of it. Uh, so you can see sort of the details. Uh, let's see if that works. My computer is very slow, so it may take a minute. Um, Christy, when we get to yours, once again, this will take a while too to load up. Sounds so. great. So oh, wow, that's pretty. So there it is. Very beautiful. So it uses gold work. It, you can see it has cup chain. It has all kinds of crystals. It has re basic embroidery, real embroidery. It has tambour. So I just sort of just threw everything in there. So it's kind of like a little um, sampler of a bunch of different techniques. Uh, it does, um, I do assume that you know basic bead embroidery beforehand. So I'm not going to be going over. Here's another photo. Um, I'm not going to be going over basic bead embroidery in class, but I'll be going over the tambour. I'll be going over basic embroidery stitches. I'll be going over basic gold work and the tambour. I think I said that already a couple of times. So anyway, that's the project. Uh, the kits are already available on my website. Um, and I will, um, I don't think I'm going to put that in the chat right now. I think uh, once it gets up on the website, on the Upper Midwest Bead Society website, uh, then uh, we'll go ahead. And um, I think I need to send to you, Jan, the list of things that are in that kit, just in case everybody has their own stuff and wants to bring it. So kit is not uh, necessary but it's $65 for the full kit that includes uh, the tambour hook. It includes all the beads, all the gold, all the ch cup chain, everything that I you see here. So uh, let's see um, here. Did you get my email that I wanted you to send yes. me a PayPal invoice for that? Yeah, absolutely. I sure did, Maggie. I just didn't have a chance. I was in a meeting. That's right okay. Before. No, I know. I just I wanted absolutely to make sure Now, yeah. um, what about... Um, who do we pay for your class time? So, so the, the class will be part of the a registration form. Okay. The for the class, but you buy the kit off of her website. Right. Okay. So um, do you happen to know offhand, Jen, how much the class is? The class is 40. Oh, not bad. Great. Super. Yeah. yeah. So, the, so the Bead Society is funding, you know, kind of bringing Hannah in for this class just okay. to make it available to everybody. Mm -hmm. So, Hannah, do you prefer that I go to your website and buy the kit, or you want no, to? No, no, no. Either fine it is that. That's fine. The uh, I'll send you a PayPal uh, later this evening. Okie dokie. It is for everybody. Uh, it is an in-person class only because the way that you hold the tambour hook, I I haven't figured out how to teach that on Zoom yet. So it is in-person. What's that? I just said, I think that I agree with you. I think that'd be a toughie. I've tried a little bit of it and right. I yeah, don't know how you would it. hold it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I haven't figured that part out yet. So it's in-person only. We're not going to be able to have anybody as even as, um, you know, I went back and forth about whether or not we could teach it also sort of online so that more people could, could take part. And I just, I don't think I'd be as good with that. So once again, it's an in-person only. So. 
Okay. okay. Well, I'm okay. looking forward to that. Right, and your class is Thursday, the first full day of the retreat, right? I, I think that's what we did because that's when you have off and so you can go to the right. retreat. That means I can go to the retreat and take right. your class. Yes. Right. <laughs> but okay. Wednesday night is the first technically half night right. that you can show right. up, right, Jan? Right, right. Um, I think it's I think it's like uh, noon or one o'clock on Wednesday is when we can arrive. Mm -hmm. So they have time for cleaning in the morning. Oh, nice. And, and, then, and then it goes through Sunday, and usually after brunch on Sunday, people are are hitting up. Oh, super. Well, I'm Very excited. Project, guys. It was fun shopping for this project because I just wanted to throw all kinds of different things at you. And so I had a really good fun. It should be fun. Good. Okay. Do we have any other announcements? Anybody else have anything else to cover? What about Lisa's Let's Be Live? Yes. Oh. Yes, Lisa. where's Lisa? Lisa, where are you? Lisa, I saw her. Rose. I, I thought I saw Lisa come in. I, oh, I she was here earlier, but I don't see her right now. Huh. Huh. Well, um, let's see if. Oh, there she is. Hold on. She's coming back in right now. Oh, right now. Yep. So. So, Lisa, you're just in time. We were hoping you would talk about your class. Looks like Lisa maybe having to Lisa. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm can you no. hear me? Okay. Uh, yes. Okay, Hi. good. We can't see you, I'm but we can hear you. I'm on my phone right now. So <laughs> oh, okay. um so I wasn't too sure. Um so my class is this uh Saturday um on the twelfth. And am I gonna be teaching at one o'clock, Rochelle? Um, yes. Yeah, one to three o'clock. Okay, and it's a checkerboard um, bracelet. And photos of that are on the Upper Midwest Beat Society webpage. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of afraid to try to figure out how to get my camera open on this phone. <laughs> you don't have to hit allow. It's That's what I just did. I signed into mine too. My computer didn't want to work. So you have to allow your camera to film, record, do whatever. That's what mine was a setting thing. Okay. Well, but we, there's pictures, there's the pattern there, supplies. You can get yep. kits at Lisa's, right? Yes. And I do have two of the black and white version. Um, but if you want to get the kit now, I'm afraid. Um, thank you for um, putting that up on the Zoom meeting, sure. Anna. No. Um, I'm I'm afraid that um, if you did want to purchase a kit from my web website, it will not be. Uh, you will not receive it in time for the class. Yeah, we can go out until tomorrow. So yes. So um, but. You're more than welcome to purchase a kit and I will send it out right away. Right, so you can watch the class and then make it afterwards. Absolutely. Yes. And I will send the link later this week. Thank you. Oh, super. Well, actually the Zoom link is also on the Facebook page right next to Lisa's name on the calendar. So um, for anybody who's not a member, please invite them and tell them that the Facebook link is there, the pattern is there. So it's open for everybody, not just members. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so Hannah, do you want to do you want to introduce Christy? Oh, sure. Give me just a second. Um
So I am, I'm really thrilled that, that Christy is here with us today. Uh, I met her originally at Eden Button and uh, I just love her, her wonderful sense of humor and these fabulous little objects that she, she would make. So I asked her to come and uh, speak to us about her work. And uh, so she is a award-winning artist and she specializes in mixed media both sculptural pieces and adornment. And her style really embraces an abundance of embellishments. This is not minimalism, people. It <laughs> incorporates glass, gems, pearls, beads, fiber. So it's got that mixed media that, that I just really love. So I'm excited to see what she, she tells us about. Her work expresses joy, exuberance, and a little bit of love, I think. <laughs> Christie's artist has been showcased in books, articles, juried shows, exhibits, jury contests, and now all over Facebook and the internet. Uh, uh, she's written a dozen how-to books on creating, and she teaches throughout the wor world. Uh, she says, I am an artist because I must be. My mind wanders and my fingers follow. I try to find the joy and share it. To view more of Christie's work and learn about her, you can visit her website, which is www.christyfriesian.com, which I will also put into the, uh, the chat in just a second here. Give me a second. Thank you for that. Sure. Let's see. There we go. Whoop. Hold on. There we go. That should do it. And Christy, are you ready to take it on? I'm ready, baby. All Absolutely. Right. Now, do you want to talk a little or shall I just start your, your... Let me talk for one second and then okay. we'll switch over because I wanted to, first of all, thank you for such a nice lead in. Um, and also for doing the techie stuff. I've got a little slide presentation that I have um, done for various speed shows. And I asked Hannah if, uh, or Hannah, if she wouldn't mind doing that for me. Uh, cause that's one less thing for me to mess up. Right. So, um, I didn't want to put any stress on her, but I really do appreciate that she's doing that. And then just a little, I mentioned when I was chatting to some of you that just came in, I am currently in Maui. My brother lives, has lived in Maui for decades and I, uh, went to visit about three years ago and here I still am. So you're going to see beside me, my maid, maid bed, which is nice. Um, and then, you know, just our little living space. Cause my Whole, everything is just in my room here, which is a lovely room. But with this camera angle, you unfortunately have to see my bed. Just deal with it. It's all good. <laughs> okay. So that's all I wanted to say. Uh, and then we'll launch right into all the fun. Oh, one last thing. Depending on what you all who are running this prefer, we've got a chat room open. If you are typing questions in there, uh, I may be able to see and read and answer those as we go along. If you want to, you know, hey, Christy, and, and have a question, if that's good with the the powers that be, I'm fine with that. I like this to be an interactive thing. I know just if we sit and listen to somebody talk, that can get tedious. So I really do welcome asking questions either by typing or-, or um, The duck comment. has returned. But we'll have time at the end as well for anything. So you can also jot it down if you prefer. Okay, now I'm ready. Hold on just a second. No worries, because you already warned me. It takes a little while to do the switch over so we can watch her screen which means you'll right. see a little teeny bit of me off in the corner, which is probably the best. And then you could just look at all the eye candy, which we really like. Um, this will be recorded so you can, you know, take screenshots or do whatever you want to save this. I think I've also made this little presentation available through my uh, website on the tutorial section. If you wanted to download it as a, you know, viewable PDF or whatever, you're welcome to do that. So. Uh, but yeah, but uh, you, you can you can use any of this stuff however you wish. Hang on, I'm having trouble getting it started. Just hang well, tight. I'll chat while you're doing that, and then I'll shut up while once it pops up. So no stress. Um, I was mentioning, and and Beth reminded me, which I appreciate, Beth, that um, uh, obviously you guys are very bead and jewelry centric. Um, but as was discussed, uh, most of us have multiple materials we work in. So this is designated for a bead society, but you're going to see that since a lot of my work is mixed media, I'm pulling examples from some of the clays that I work in, but the concepts translate into whatever any of us are doing. All right. 
So I think we're going to shrink that image a little when Beth's probably working on that right now so you can see the whole thing in the slide. There she is. Nice. She's so good. Thank you, Beth. Um, not Beth, Hannah. Uh, okay. I really appreciate that. I also have a problem with names. So if I say the wrong name, y'all shout out and yes, get me on the right, straight and narrow. So this is just the concept from idea to finished piece. We're talking a lot about creativity. That's the main focus that I want to deal with. But um, we're talking about creativity and inspiration. Where does that come from? And then how do you use your ideas to be innovative? And then finally, how do you make things with them? So inspiration, innovation, and fabrication. Next, please. And uh, this is the same thing I just mentioned to you. Feel free to take pics or screenshots or whatever you want, and we'll chat as we go. All right, next. Okay, inspiration. So I wanted to talk about inspiration. Obviously, all the pictures that you see here that are artwork or pieces of mine, and you're welcome to ask questions about it. Primarily, I work in polymer clays and epoxy clays. At the time that I put this together, it was more polymer than epoxy. I have more and I'll have a little show and tell at the end, into doing a lot of epoxy clay, which is of particular interest to beaters, because all of us have those bead soups, you know, tiny bit left in a tube. And what do we do with that? You mix up epoxy clay and you make a mosaic assemblage out of them. And you can use epoxy clay very similarly to bead embroidery. So I think you're going to see a lot of crossovers. So inspiration comes from all the things that we see the things that we experience, that we dream, they're kind of all swirled together in a way that is unique. To each it's still there. It's still there. Uh, okay, so the next. So let's picture creativity, okay? It's kind of like a deep well at the very core of your artistic self. Inspiration is that spring that keeps that well filled up. So where does the spring come from? And how do you keep that filled up? If we want to dip into that well of creativity, where is that coming from? Next. The spring of inspiration, I like to liken it to that, is continuously refilled by seeing and imagining. And we're going to talk about that for the rest of this chat. All right, next. Let's look at seeing. So it's all about seeing. And it's not just like seeing, but really seeing. All right, so you know there's a difference between you glance at something and you really see it. And all of you being creatives, being makers, you know oh, what that means. Next, please. I don't think you can survive the winter. All right, so but here's no. the things we're going to see. We want to see how that leaf curls. Like we notice that there's a leaf or a fern. How does that curl? Look at those subtle colors that are playing in the light of that old rusty chain. How does that look? What does that inspire us? How does that, all these images are filling us up. You see that variety of the blues in that Van Gogh at the painting at the museum. You see, you see, you see, you see. Next. So what do we see and what do we look at? Well, everything. We all know this. You want to look at nature. So much inspiration from nature. So much inspiration from art. And of course, being jewelry makers, jewelry of every era, every type, every style, every construction are part of what we really want to be looking at to fill up our inspirational well. Next. So seeing leads to imagining and imagining leads to inspiration. Let's talk about that next. So now we're going to start kind of breaking this down a little bit. Let's take a quick look about how that inspiration works from seeing to imagining. And we'll have a couple of examples of this. So the first one, we're, we're seeing this Mesoamerican mask, right? Um, we, we noticed it. It's a museum piece. Um, I particularly like this style of artwork, so I notice it. The next step, obviously, we're really going to see it. We're going to start looking how the shell eyes are inlaid. Look at how they piece together all those little turquoise bits. Look at that interesting flower thing that's going on in the forehead. So then we take it that next step. We've seen it now. We've added that to the big slush pile in the center of our artistic souls. Now, how could we reimagine that to be inspired by it? So I'm looking at that flower. I think, huh, what would that look like as part of a necklace? Oh, what if that was a dangle? What if we turned it down upside down and made it into a dangle? Well, that's cool. And look at that interesting little pattern underneath the nose of that piece. What if I use that in my design and then dangle that thing from it? Now, I would do that with epoxy clay or polymer clay, you might do that with um, a, a loom work or a bead embroidery piece or whatever it is that you uh, see or look for a charm that looks like that and put it together. It's like that's how this picture of a strange face can lead to something completely different because we're seeing and then we're seeing. 
All right, next one. Okay, so, um, oh, next slide, sorry. I think I did, maybe I did something. All right, so here's a little bit more about that same process. And I'm taking very classic uh, museum pieces because it's something that we all can see and it's not treading on any uh, current artistic toes, but you do the same with everything. Um, so I'm looking at this rock carving in a temple somewhere in India, and there's so many things I see going on. Like, look at the faces on those griffins or whatever they are. But I'm particularly looking at those little um, flourishes above his shoulders, which would make an interesting dangle. The thing above the head, isn't that neat the way the leaves all fan out like that and that other little piece, wouldn't that be fun? That would be an interesting way to maybe lay some glass leaves and put a cabochon in the middle, whatever. And then all of those other flourishes, the curls, the swirls of the leaves, these are all things that you can just reimagine by looking at a piece like this. Same thing with this Japanese sword um, hilt, uh, protect or whatever. I, I saw the two fish kissing, which I think was lovely, but then what if you flipped them over and then they were like, okay, I don't like you anymore. And now they're swimming away. I mean, there's just ways that we can be inspired not to recreate what we see, but to let it recreate itself within us to new ideas. All right, next. This one's a particularly fun one to me because it's uh, some from William Morris. And if any of you uh, enjoy the um, arts and crafts movement and Art Nouveau and all that, you'll love a William Morris if you haven't looked him up to see some of his um, art. Um, he does a lot of, he did a lot of textile stuff, uh, wallpapers, and I think he's especially of interest to jewelry makers because his design, his sense of color and repetition of patterns is phenomenal. So he's a wonderful inspiration. So I saw this little sketch in one of his sketchbooks and I was particularly noticing, I was seeing the way that line of leaves had like a negative and a positive, which I was really entranced by. So then I kind of sketched it out so I would remember it. And then I translated it into a piece of polymer where I was kind of playing with that negative positive kind of an idea. So again, not to reproduce what he did, which is great, but to take it into my own space. All right, next. You're doing great, Hannah. So when is inspiration most likely to arrive? And the reason I'm taking a, a little while here to talk about inspiration and creativity is I think this is the part that many of us can struggle with. Like if we've got a pattern, we can do that pattern. It's at, you know, all good, no problem. Um, and thank you, I see Hannah put up uh, Wikipedia on William Morris, wonderful. So you guys click on that and, and look at that later. Um, but the creativity process, we, we know how to follow a pattern, we can repeat a thing, but how do we get the creative part? And, and again, you're looking at things all the time. So when are the things you see most likely to translate into inspiration? And I like to call them all of that screensaver time, which is one good reason to put away your phones and not do all the doom scrolling, although that's fun. But sometimes we need to put that away so that we have a chance for the ideas of all the things we've seen have have a chance to kind of come forward and give us some ideas. So if you meditate, that's a good time to kind of be um, bringing your brain down into a, a simpler sense, simpler patterning. Um, but then you can, as you come out of that, you can start thinking about stuff you were, you were imagining. I find that, you know, I'm in the shower because I can't be on my phone or doing something else in the shower. That's a great time when ideas come. Boring car trips, although nowadays we're all talking and on our phone. But if you hit that stretch where you can't get any internet and you didn't download a movie, just let your mind wander and keep a little notebook nearby and write down the things you're thinking about. Even if they're weird and dumb and they don't make any sense, just scribble them down. They'll, they'll make sense later when they're ready to. And then, of course, uh, during long and tedious meetings and lectures like this is um, when you have got lots of ideas. So keep your little books nearby and grab those inspirations before they get away. All right, next. All right, so now let's let's go from inspiration to creating. I think we're going to have more that we want to talk about about the creative process as we go along. But for now, we're going to go to the actual making of stuff. Next. So once you've imagined ideas, so let's say we were looking at stuff, we put it in that little well, we were sitting kind of daydreaming and, oh, I have an idea. Like, how do we create that stuff? Okay, so we've got an idea. How do we create it? Let's talk about that a little bit. Often we're going to need to invent ways to accomplish our vision. 
And sometimes that means by making a new tool. Sometimes it means coming up with a new technique or a new process, uh, new ways to be innovative. Humans are, and I apologize, I think sometimes changing in sizes changes where the the, the stuff is. It's not Hannah's fault. It was, I'm sure, me when I was creating this, I didn't lock things in place. So it's, it's no worries. But I basically are saying there that humans are very innovative. We come up with wheels, you know, both to cart things around on and to create pottery with. We come up with rockets. As a species, we got this. So how can we individually as beadsters do something with this innovation? All right, next. You can do the next one, Hannah. Okay, so creative innovation. Um, innovations can happen by accident, right? They can be the result of your effort to try and find a solution to the problem of whatever it is you're making. Um, they also can be borrowed from others and adapted to your unique unique needs. I think we've all been there when you're creating something and you, oh, I don't have any more crimps. Well, what else can I do? You know, you, you kind of that necessity is a mother of invention concept. So solutions to problems often come up with ways of doing things that you didn't imagine and then you take it farther. Um, and also you see somebody doing something and you think, well, that's good, but what if I did it this other way or I fixed that thing or I combined it with this thing? So we're um, some people are really good at this, some people are not. If you are great at it, just be happy you have that app installed in your brain. And if you're not, don't, don't kick yourself. If you could have signed up for the app, you would have. If you don't have it, you just do the best you can. Uh, so either way, if you got a lot or a little, it's okay. We all have some, so we'll use what we can. All right, next screen. So here's an example in my own work of an accidental innovation. So um, the end result was this um, paint, a large sort of painting mosaic assemblage thing that I was doing. And um, it came about because I was showing people how to make a blend with polymer clay. And one of the things that polymer clay is so marvelous at is that it is in color and the colors that you're playing with are the colors you get once you're done baking it in the oven to harden it for the most part. Uh, sometimes they darken a little or, or whatever, but they are set, essentially what you see is what you get, which is lovely. So I was doing that and I, I don't remember the exact thing, but I, for some reason, stuck my thumb in it. I think I was going to smear something and I ended up twisting and I went, whoa, huh. If I twist my thumb on the surface of this clay, I get these interesting twirls, huh? So I played with that a little bit and I just called it a, quist, a Christy Twisty. There's a little um, thing on my YouTube channel on how to do that if you want to play with polymer clay. But it led me to create this piece and uh, it, it was perfect for beads, etc. But it was an example for something that's accidental. So you may have found the same thing. I'm sure somebody who invented the bead spinner either was an engineer and sort of had to solve a problem or they were just doing something and thought, oh, hey, wow, I didn't, I'm spinning this thing and I, oh, well, look at that. They're all coming up on my, my little, if I curve that, you know, so it takes it to other, I'm not sure that that's how it was invented, but that's that, the kind of way that things can get accidentally innovative. All right, next slide. So an accidental innovation, again, this is another one that I did and I love it. When I'm teaching um, with polymer, you you put it through a pasta machine and it, it wrinkles, not wrinkles, it blends. But I was in a hurry. And so I had my fingers up underneath it to catch it, but they were too far up and it crumpled in my hand. And then when it crumpled, I thought, well, that's different. What does that look like inside? And you cut it open and then it has this interesting patterning. So those are the sorts of things that as you are playing with your materials, your innovations happen accidentally. Okay, next. Another one is adaptive innovation. So um, as you are watching me describe the things I'm doing with my clay, you can extrapolate those out into the things that you do with your particular materials and your particular techniques and styles. I love these arts and crafts style ceramic ties. How could I do them in polymer clay? Next slide. Okay, so the actual technique for uh, clay is there is a plaster mold that's poured and then somebody uses tools to carve through that plaster to make an impression that then when the slip is added, or in this case, probably a slab, it pushes down in and creates a mold, right? And it works for clay because plaster will absorb the excess uh, moisture out of 
ceramic clay and can be then pulled off rather easily, right? And then they glaze it and fill it and do all the things. Well, polymer clay doesn't work that way. It's not porous, so you have to kind of play with other things. So I won't go through the particulars because, again, it's polymer. But I kind of saw what they were doing. I adapted it to the way that I thought I could do with some other materials, and it worked out really well. And the next slide will show you the end results that I came up with. And these are something that is made to look like ceramic, but is made out of polymer. So therefore, as a pendant, it's very lightweight or a brooch or whatever. And it has that feeling of glaze. So I did some innovations with the way the glazing was. And obviously, I made that sort of raised area. So that's a way of like seeing and then letting it kind of filter through and being innovative and creating from what you see. All right, next. So adaptive, all right, adaptive in innovation is when you are adapting, just like I sh kind of showed you there, you're adapting some technique and you're, in this case, bringing it into polymer clay, wood carving, stained glass, graffito, these are all techniques that are out there in the world. And I have seen what they what they do with their original source material and then kind of reimagined doing it in my particular material. Next. And then of course, shameless commercial plug. If this sounds intriguing to you, and you would like to explore it further. I those this particular book is out of print, but I have the ebook available, and I think mm -hmm. uh, that is on my website. You can go straight yes. over there uh, and uh, find that. And the, there's an ebook section or a tutorial section. So yes, it's uh, funky, can, right? Give me a second, and I'll find that and and put the oh, link up. Yeah, that sounds okay. great. Also, I think somebody is unmuted. If you could mute yourself, that would be super. Funky. <laughs> I was just going to say, Christy, this is one of my favorite books. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I yeah. love it. It is so full of material. Uh, and there's so many projects. And I've highlighted other artists in there, too, which is fun. Um, and I, I really appreciate that. Um, they're just, there's, there's so much you can do with flowers and plants and flora. Um, it, I really enjoy doing that one. So I, I appreciate that. But all my books, I think I only have one that's actually currently in print, in print and um, the rest are all eBooks. So uh, you can you can get them on my on my site that way. But yeah, thank you. I, I like that too. Oops, did you go on mute? Christy, you're muted. Can one of the hosts unmute Christy or what's going on? Check the uh, right, the left hand corner of your computer screen. Nope. Bottom left of your screen, Christy. And if you move your cursor over it, a bar might pop up. This is really weird. I can mute her, but I can't unmute her. I think that um, the, the fact that you can mute people but not unmute them is a security issue for Zoom. That if somebody, you have the power to mute as a- um, Can you hear me there now? She's back, she's back. Oh, yeah. I there you go. I a different microphone. It's so weird. It just everything shows as me still being on it just stopped using whatever microphone was currently in use how odd is that right well so far we're working right okay good good you can hear me whoo whoo glad to hear it shoot i i i'm so limited in knowing what i can do with tech so that once something goes wrong it's like <laughs> oh boy well thank you guys sorry about that so i was just giving you a shameless plug while we were waiting for hana to come back and throw the slides back up um, it was just uh, about the, the book, other book, the Do You See What I See? It's kind of taking this idea a little further where I'm kind of showing you things that I see and explaining how my thought process works. I feel like I have an overabundance of creative thinking. So I like sharing that with people as much as I can, because for some reason I got lots and uh, I know not everybody does. And so that's kind of a good thing for me to share. 
So I am ready whenever you are, Hannah. I think we okay. were I'm gonna on try to four. I'm going to try to start sharing again. Sorry about that, guys. No worries. This is all good. We good. No problem. I, I can talk on and on and on and ramble, so it's not ever any problem. Does anybody have any questions at this point about some of the things we've talked about so far? Just a comment. I think one of the things that was really interesting, Christy, about what you showed, you showed what the inspiration was and it's not about copying it's about it's like hey i'm interested in this how can i make it mine and it's it's kind of like getting further along the pro progression it's like you don't have to invent everything from scratch if you've got something to start from but then you're still nowhere to go because you have some sort of reference yeah, and that is so wonderful. And in fact, that's a beautiful segue into this slide. Thank you very much. Because um, that is a thing that all makers struggle with from various ends of the spectrum on how do I copy? How do I prevent being copied? And everybody's got a different opinion about that. Here's mine. And I will um, tell you that it is absolutely my opinion. Um, I don't need anybody to agree with me. I'm just going to put it out there as a way to think about it, is that um, if we're thinking about copying, obviously the ones I showed you were like, here's a thing from somebody that's long gone that I'm reimagining, flipping it upside down and doing something else with. We can all agree that that has very little uh, intrusion upon someone else's creativity. But what if you see a, a current artist and you're inspired by them or uh, whatever? And Hannah, thank you for all the links that you're putting there. I appreciate that very much. So here's just a little something to ask yourself whenever you're adapting someone else's ideas or innovations to use in your own work. Number one, ask for permission if that seems appropriate. If you're doing something that is very much like someone else's, like if somebody saw it and went, oh, that's a Christie dragon or whatever. If the, if the artist doesn't already say out there that, oh, yes, feel free to copy, ask them just in case, you know, they have an opinion. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to do it about every little thing, but you know when you're close enough to something that, if it was you, you'd kind of like to be asked. Then as an artist ourselves, get in the habit of sharing. Because one of the ways that we will feel more comfortable about moving on in our own work is to share what we're doing. Which I know sometimes can be tricky because we kind of feel like I need to keep this to myself because what if I never get another idea? The very act of sharing kind of helps the gratitude of the community happen. It helps them be not everybody will pick up on this, but many people will pick up and be grateful that you showed them how to do this bead stitch or you shared your pattern or whatever. And so they become more respectful of the process in, in when they use other people's work as well as sharing their own. And then we all can grow and we grow beyond needing to look exactly like someone else because that's part of it. When we start, we copy. That is a necessary part. That has always been a part of art. Uh, at, look at any of the classic uh, oil painters. I mean, that is how you learned your chops by copying the masters. So this is all a very part of a good part of the process. Just have respect and connect with each other as much as we can, and and all should work out just fine. <laughs> um, okay, so next slide. Let's jump on into a couple of other little how-to stuff. So now we're going to talk about problem solving as a part of innovation. So remember I talked about that, that, you know, sometimes innovation is just solving a problem, right? So my problem was, well, how could I make a hollow but strong sculptural form? You might have the same in beadwork. What if, how would you make a hollow bead that had its own integrity when it gets squished, like out of beads, not a glass or something like that? So for me in polymer, there was problems to solve. Polymer... You ended up muted again, Christy. Maybe there's a loose cord or something on your microphone. Oh, now she's frozen. Is it the connection? Or is she frozen or just really concentrating? No, I think she's frozen. She looks frozen to me. Yeah. She looks frozen to me. Mm -hmm. Either that or she stopped breathing. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> it's Christy in sculptural form. <laughs> yeah. 
fly <laughs> all the way from Maui. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah, it's kind of amazing. Yeah. Oh, oh, here she comes. Really? Yeah, she's coming back in. <laughs> Oh, come here, Gunny. Quit being a baby. I took a, um, what was it years ago when Maureen Carlson's uh, Center for Creative Arts um, was still open. Christy came for a week um, to teach just, uh, just a, it was, it was jam packed. There was like five days each half day was essentially a different technique. It's like, oh, now we're gonna carve the polymer clay and now we're gonna do this with the polymer clay. So it was really quite the treat. That was a, some years ago, but um, very, she's very generous as, a, as an artist. And it's funny because um, one of the things that she said, uh, what she was just kind of talking about, about sharing and just letting, you know, teaching, um, it really pushed her as an artist, you know, it's like she wanted to con to continue to grow. And if she was always doing the same thing and keeping it too close to her, you know, it's like, oh, I'm not going to share this secret, then she was never going to try something else or explore another area. So um, she was always very uh, open about um, when you're, you went, when you were in a class, if you wanted to, you know, take a picture of her demonstrating a step or um, take a picture of what you were working on and share it. She was always, oh, you have to go right ahead, go right ahead. She's, from her perspective, she was really encouraging that because it would, you know, the sharing begets more information and, you know, growth. But also she thought, hey, you know, if somebody's interested in this, you know, they're only getting a little snippet of what it is to be in a Christy Friesen class. So, Maybe next time around, the person that's really interested in what she's demonstrating, you know, they'll take the class too, or they'll buy the work that was featured or uh, something like that. So very different from other Palmer Clay instructors that I've taken from in that regard. You know, there was, for example, as a contrast. I agree. I almost always learn something when I teach. And when you reach out and share things, it comes back to you. Yeah, yeah. I have to remember that, you know, and oh, was it was yesterday, there was um, this, this past weekend was something called the Polymer Arts Summit. So it was a virtual two days of Zoom, you know, so this is, <laughs> you know, I'll be ready to get outside and go for a walk pretty soon. Um, anyway, there was one, uh, one of the presenters, I think it was on Sunday morning, she's from France and she said, you know, as a teacher, you think, oh, they, they have all the confidence and creativity in the world. And she says, you know, one of my fears as an instructor is that one of my students' work is going to turn out better than my own. And she said, you know, she says, like, this is really real. And she says, you really, if you're going to be a teacher, you've got to get past that and know that that is a challenge for you as an instructor that you know, they might, they're never going to be exactly the same. So it might be different in some way. It might be better, you know, by somebody else's standards, but you can take pride in the being the springboard or the educator. And it's a, you know, so she was a big proponent of having teaching experience push you as an artist. Christy is just trying to come back in. So hopefully we'll have her back soon. Okay. Okay. Um, I, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yay. Okay. Can you see me? No. No. Okay. So I'm not sure what that is. Um, let's see. So down in your lower left-hand corner, there's a, a video. Right. Um, and unfortunately it shows that that is working. Um, yeah but it's not letting me in. So um, I've had some issues with my Zoom that every time I've tried to join lately, it'll say like, you need to upgrade. And then I say, okay, upgrade. And then it goes, can't do it, bye. Um, so the last time when we, we did a couple of samples here to make sure everything was going okay. And uh, we had, um, you know, everything was fine. Everything worked. It let me override everything. And now I'm on my phone instead of my, uh, 
I'm going to close out all the places I am on the, the computer. Uh, maybe that will make a difference. I don't know. Uh, Cause I have a lot oh, of, a lot of, was, I see you. Oh, we see you. Yeah. Oh, good. You can see me. Wonderful. 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 Uh, and I, I apologize about that. Um, I guess I'm going to have to figure out, but Zoom has really decided that they are not letting me move forward on this. So I'm going to have to get some actual tech help on that. But uh, can everybody see me okay now? Yes. Okay. And I was listening to all the very lovely things you were saying. And um, if I have forgotten to acknowledge where I've met some of you, like obviously taking in the Marines class, that was wonderful. Um, thank you for enjoying that with me. And, and I do definitely agree that everyone is allowed to feel ownership of their stuff you do not have to share if you don't want to but i have found personally that the more i'm able to share the more comes back to me and it has been a better way so i would just encourage everybody like don't be afraid of that process it's okay it's okay we we have enough and we can share it if you feel like you're ready for it um but in so doing, be very careful of what other people have too and be respectful of it. So anyway, I think that's where we were and we were up to, I think like slide 26, right, Hannah? Um, I don't think I have numbers. Oh, okay. But you're at the right right one. I think the one after the one I'm seeing on my screen is the correct one. Oh, okay. So having said that, I can't really see chat. So if anybody has any questions or whatever, just blat them on out and yeah. hopefully I won't disappear again. <laughs> <laughs> And thanks for being patient, everybody. I appreciate that. Sure. So is this the right screen now? It is. So let me get to that one. Okay, so now we're going to talk about problem solving steps. And again, this is Polymer, so I won't belabor it. But I, just, I realized that the way I could do that was work over glass. But I needed to pre-score that glass so I could break it out easy. And I, then I used repel gel so it wouldn't stick. So these are different things that once you figure out what you need to do, then you start analyzing different ways that you could solve that problem. And uh, it may work, it may not. Uh, the next uh, one is another example. And, and I'm, I like this one. So the next slide when you're ready. I like this one because you'll see in a minute. Uh, this is another example. So how could I make an insect that had clear jewel studded wings? All right. So, so how can I do them so that the wings won't droop? How can it, if I use resin then I can't bake it and I want to include it like nowadays I'm using epoxy clay so the baking wouldn't be a problem so that's one of the problems that I solved that I now have new ways to do that but uh polymer and epoxy clay don't always stick really great so huh all right next slide please my dear so here were my problem solving steps is that I used sheet mica which is a rock that you can cut and it's clear and I was able to glue the jewels on there and then put a little resin over them to hold everything in place. And then I did use a little slit into that insect body and added um, epoxy clay, now is how I do it, to make it stay in there. And polybonder again to attach a little bit. So I innovated even more from there. But the, the reason why I think this is interesting is that in, um, in the years that followed on this particular wing, the layers of the mica start splitting. So a problem I didn't even know I had to solve was how do you keep the edges sealed so that the wings themselves don't split? So, you know, the, the innovations are constant. We always have to think of new things. All right, here's a couple more really quick and fun problem solving examples in the next slide. And um, some of these involve resin, which I know many of you work in. The first one is a little hollow form. I wanted to make a little vessel. So I realized that I could get moist paper, uh, toilet paper and make it into a ball and then do my clay around it. And then um, basically just put it in a pot and, of water and let it soak so I could use tweezers to pick that toilet paper out. That may be a way to do a hollow bead if you want to bead around a form and have it more sturdy with a thicker wire so that it holds its shape, but you need something hollow to work around that then can be removed. That could be something worth playing with. Uh, how do I get a ripple effect in resin? Because I wanted the idea that this ripple, and I use that with sandpaper to kind of um, distress the resin and then new resin on top because new resin on top of scratched resin turns clear again, which gives you that look. A uh, little bit of saran wrap or plastic wrap will make a waterfall when dipped in resin. You can use polymer to kind of hold a piece and then pour resin on top. 
so that it will let something go like it's swimming through. So these are all just sort of innovative things that I came through, came with to work through my problems of how to do something. Okay, so the next slide, please, my dear. So after innovation comes fabrication, which is just a fancy way of saying, now we've got to make it. So next. So uh, fabrication usually requires um, ex research, experimentation, refinement uh, in order to be successfully done. So next slide. Yeah, good luck with that. Okay, so um, <laughs> when you're doing all those things, research and experimentation, refinement, all right, that sounds a little much, right? Um, but honestly, next slide, please. Research is kind of easy. We already have the internet. We can see what other people have done. We can pretty much Google search or whatever you use for your search, anything, and find various ways that people have done it successfully or not. So research, we got that. Experimentation that takes time and practice. What you thought might work really great, might not. Or it might, in which case, great, good for you. You just keep trying. And all of you beaters have been through that a million times. How tight do I need to make my stitches? What kind of wax linen is gonna make that not the best? How can I get the holes in these pearls bigger? Could I buy a bigger one? You're, you're doing this experimentation constantly. And then refinement will make that technique or that tool or that process keep working better and better. So you've dipped from your well of inspiration. You've filled the results of your seeing and your imagining. Your well is filled up with those. You've gone on to creating something innovative. So now we're going to just do a couple eye candy slideshows. And then we're almost at the end, you guys, um, of just some things that I've done um, that will, will show you just some of this sort of creative approach. So the pendants uh, on the next, uh, next slide, sorry are, uh, uh, they're polymer clay, but it's using kintsu, kintsuji technique, which is a Japanese art of repairing broken pottery with gold and resin to make the broken piece more beautiful. So instead of trying to hide the flaw, you accentuate the flaw, which I love that concept. And I played with that with polymer, uh, that, that's to make some series of pendants. The other one here is also a pendant where I'm incorporating found objects. Uh, and incorporating those into, uh, so almost like a mosaical um, collage type piece. All right, next slide. Uh, this one is really, I'm, I'm really moving into, which is where I am now, is this whole mixed media thing where I'm bringing in crystals and I'm bringing in beads and I'm bringing in found objects and just all of the bead show finds of the universe and incorporating them all together into this particular thing happens to be a wall piece. I do a lot of wall pieces, but on a smaller scale would make amazing brooches and amazing um, uh, uh, pendants and such. And if you already do bead embroidery, then this is barely even a sidestep into using epoxy clay as your way of assembling. You're already seeing the process. This is another way of adding to what you already know. All right, next, um, next slide, please. So this is what happened with that little bug. It just became part of a larger piece. I used that same technique on the, the petals of the flower. Um, I cut out spaces in the leaves to let some stuff shine through. So that, that piece had a lot of little innovations on it. All right, next one. Um, this is just two examples. One, uh, that peacock necklace there, if you want to go to Fire Mountain Gems and type in, uh, well, you can go to the video section, but you can type in Christy Friesen and you'll find a million videos that I've made for them. Um, and they all center around both polymer clay and jewelry making. But this was one of the pieces that they put in their cover. You might remember that issue, but they asked me for the complete how-to steps on that, um, which I, I gave them. And it's, there's some interesting ways of stringing in there using, um, crimps and, um, I'm using flexible wire, uh, like a soft flex, that kind of thing um, that you might want to scan through. And although you may not want to make the polymer clay peacock, some of the ways of doing dangles and crimping, um, if you haven't experimented with those already, you might like to. The, the vase is covered with 24 karat gold leaf. I use a lot of gold leaf. It goes perfectly over polymer clay or epoxy clay and then can be scratched through in this graffito technique that I like. I also have a tutorial on a graffito technique. So if you want to learn more about that, you can wander over to my website and go to the tutorial section. And I think Hannah will mention that I have a special coupon code for you guys that is 
unlimited in both time and quantity for a buy one, get one free on any of my tutorials. So anytime you want to give it a try, try some epoxy clay or whatever. Um, you At checkout, you can use this code, which I forget, but Hana knows. Um, and you can type that in and it will give you a free one for each one you buy. It will give you the cheapest ones free, just saying. So personally, between you and me, what I would do is I would find all the ones you want and couple up the most expensive ones and then just buy those and then the next and buy those, you know, and so that way you're always getting the best bargain because um, there's no shipping or anything. So you could do that. All right. Next slide, if you don't mind. Before you go into that, um, I actually don't have that buy one, get one free in front of me right now. I have some other links. Um, we need to find I can tell that. it to you. No worries. I, I know where it is. One second and I will find it. Super. Coupons. And Here it is. Uh, bu bu bu. it's opening one second. Oh. The second question I have is that first wall piece that I'm going to go back to it for a minute. Yes. I, I I'm really love, would love to know how big it is. Ah, you bet. Um, that one. Oh, isn't that, that I learned how to go backwards. I learned how and to go I'm backwards. so proud of you. <laughs> I'm just very careful to not do too many backwards. It is only about seven inches tall, seven or eight inches. Actually, it's probably cool. about eight with those things that dangle down. So they're fairly small wall pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but about eight inches. And it's just got everything in it. So it's got a little hanger on the back. And um, uh, this one was actually done with polymer clay as the base. Nowadays, I would do it with epoxy clay because that's so much easier. But it, it incorporates polymer mosaic work like the orchid has got a lot of beads and crystals. I use a lot of hot fix um, mm -hmm. flat back glass rhinestones and press them in because they'll glue themselves into polymer and, uh, and epoxy clay, they just press in. But everything is like wired in and attached when you're doing it into polymer. With epoxy clay, it's a putty that turns into um, a rock hard cement. So you just basically mix the two parts of it up and then you've got about an hour using epoxy sculpt, which is what I use, to shove things in. And then you can work section at a time. It's really a beautiful thing. So, but thank you. Yeah, it's not real big, but it makes a lot of statement, doesn't it? Um, sure and then the code is UMBS dash BOGO, B O G O, buy one, get one. So UMBS dash B O G O. And that one is unlimited, um, buy one, get one. If you put them all at once, it'll give you, you know, a free one for each one you buy, uh, but you can break it up into multiple uh, orders if you prefer. Okay, we're at the um, one that has a little seahorse on it okay, and octopus. On. Yeah. And if anybody has any questions, particularly about some of these images that are wandering by, feel free to shout out. Um, we only have a couple more slides left, I think, and then we can ask, you know, answer any questions if, if you have some. But the um, the uh, the seahorse. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. You're in, you're in the right spot. I was not. Um, that uh, painting is very small. It's only maybe about six inches tall. And it is all polymer, but I um, I very much love Van Gogh, as you can tell. And I was just using clay-like paint. And um, and you might think, well, why don't you just use paint? You can, but acrylic paint has a shine to it. And I didn't want that shine and polymer doesn't. And polymer has a different way that it dries. So that was fun to play with. And then it's mounted on a painted board. Um, and then the little vessel is just a small little um, glass jar that I covered with polymer. And then I used what's, what's called Swell Again. It's a, a product line I developed and we're in the midst of sort of revamping it. So it's available, but um, it's, it's not as available as it has been. I've got some still on my site and you can go to um, the company that does the epoxy clay that I use and they also carry it, but um, it is a metal coating. So you can take anything. So let's say you're a jewelry, let's say you were a jewelry person. I mean, you know, just in case you were, and you decided to use epoxy clay to maybe stick a couple of metal findings together and add a couple of bead things. You could paint that whole thing with this one is bronze or brass. You could paint it with the metal coating and then patina it because it is actually adding a uh, metal particle to the top of things. <clears throat> and then you use actual patinas to oxidize it naturally. So it's really kind of cool. And uh, yeah, Swell Again, somebody was just, I just saw that pop up that they love Swell Again. And I, the name went away before I noticed it, but I'm so glad you love Swell Again. It's great stuff. So right now, um, the person who was m m um, packaging it for me, they closed their business and I'm partnering up with the gals who make epoxy sculpt. And uh, they're 
innovating and changing. We're playing and experimenting a bit as we re-release it, but it's still available. You can go to their site right now and get it. Um, and they're, they're AVs, Studio A-V-E-S. So same people who make Apoxy Sculpt, which I would type up for you, except for I don't have access to my chat room anymore so much. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, and but you can get it from my website too. So just bounce right on in there and grab some if you like. All right, let's jump on over to the next slide, please, with the seahorse on it. And um, this one is just capitalizing when steampunk was all the rage. It's still a popular look, but uh, for a while there, everybody was doing steampunk stuff. And I had so much fun incorporating um, found pieces, uh, old watch parts into clay. Uh, the next one is creating a faux wood and like the barnacles on there, all that's polymer. Um, just sort of using material to look like another material. It was always a lot of fun. Okay, so the next one. And we only have two more slides or three more, several more. Okay, but two more pictures. So uh, again, um, I just thought I would mention this this um, square vessel. This one stands about seven or eight inches tall. It's built over a, one of those heavy glass um, vessels that you can get at like Michael's, Joanne's Hobby Lobby, whatever, that's thick at the bottom. So it's really sturdy. Um, and I just covered it with the clay, but that little oval thing, that's something I made for, as a brooch because uh, I was demonstrating something and it had, had lied around my studio for a while and I decided it needed a new life because it just was a little big for a brooch. Not that you can't wear giant brooches, but I decided to add it to something else. So this is something when you are creating, let's say you are doing something and you get half a bracelet seed beaded and you're done with it because you've lost interest or you ran out of beads or whatever happened. You can envision ways to use that piece in something else. So I'd say keep all your stuff that is half done or a sample or you did part of a class because and look at it from time to time, because sometimes it gives you ideas for other ways that it could become a different thing. Then the other one beside it is also a vessel just showing you the range of art vessels I like to do. And um, I just used a very mossy technique. And at the bottom, you can see a, a few more of those little twisties that I showed you um, just incorporated into the design. So you just never know when you're gonna pop up with a new idea. All right, so the next slide is the last of our little eye candy. And this was just uh, using epoxy clay or a polymer clay to just grab different things. Now you could do something like this with beads so beautifully and just almost create like little bezels around all of your beaded pieces, especially things that light can go through and then cluster them together as a pendant, as a wall hanging, something like that. I mean, there's just, there's so many ideas. Okay, so now we've got the last, last couple of slides. So if you'll jump over to now what? And then the next slide is enjoy, profit, and share. So next slide, we'll talk about each of those. Enjoy your creation. Creating is one of the greatest joys to being human. Truly, we can make things, which is so unique to our species in the way that we can make. And it is just so satisfying. When you've made something, you can just enjoy that process of making. So the very first thing is you create in order to please yourself, as simple as that. Then the next one is sharing your creation. So once you've done that, you get to show off what you've created. That's what social media is for. That's what groups like this are for. You get to show each other what you've made. So the joy you had in making is now expanded upon by other people who understand and get you enjoying what you make. If you live with people, like let's say for example, I don't know, off the top of my head, your life partner tends to be a guy who's more engineer minded. And most of the time he goes, how much money did you spend on that? Could you sell it? What is that supposed to be? Um, that's not your primary share group, okay? Not trying to say anything about the state of your marriage or relationship, that's completely different. But when it comes to being excited about something you've made, don't show somebody who doesn't get it first. You can show them at some point, but first go to your pals, go to your tribe and show your people. So you get the joy of your creation reflected back in you, back to you from their own joy. The other way that you can share your creation is you can give your art to someone. There's a lot of like art abandonment. There is um, bottles of hope, beads of courage. There's a lot of different outreach groups already existing to be able to share. Plus you'll come up with other ways that you can give your work to deserving people. And then if you want to, you can also share by sharing how you've made that. Um, and, and sometimes somebody would be like, oh, wow, um, I made, uh, you, that's so great, would you show me how? 
um, if you have a tutorial or a class, you of course are, can say, um, take my class. But if it's like, oh yeah, I did this thing or I looped this around like this, whatever works for you, that sharing in your creation is another really great um, way of enjoying what comes next. So the next slide is profiting from your creation. Uh, if you want to sell your work, that is a great way to profit. Not everybody wants to, not everybody feels like it. Some people it's very stressful, don't even worry if you don't want to, but if you can, that's a way to profit. The other way of profit is of course, sell your expertise by doing tutorials, lectures, innovations that you sell um, materials for or whatever, special tools, products, all those things. You guys know that, that's not, um, that's not new to any of you guys. So the final slide, is we're going to cap all this up in a nice little image. And we're just saying from the seeing part to the making part, creativity is, is really a work of heart because our hearts are so involved in this. And um, that's exactly as it should be. So that is my little overview of the creative process. And that is it. Thank wow, you. that's amazing. Yay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, I, I would love if anybody has any questions and they want to um, uh, holler, of course you can, um, please. I can't always see all of you on my screen because I'm on my phone. So just shout out if you've got a question or anything I can answer. One of the things you didn't mention, Christy, was your uh, Sunday chats or your creative neighborhood. Oh, yes, yes, thank you for that. I have a couple of public groups and there and i'm I'm so glad you mentioned that. Um, there's two I especially want to bring to your attention. One is um, a new one that I've just started called Curiosity and Wonder. And it is specifically there it's a it's a public Facebook group, and I've just started it because those of us who make that have children or grandchildren, uh, if we teach it's a school, if we have cousins, we we are kind of, in a unique position to save space for children to have their creativity protected because life really squishes us as creatives into not being as creative, not um, letting that joyful excitement about creativity stay. And those of us who have made it into adulthood where we're still creative, we can really make a place for our kids to enjoy that with us. So I've made that group so that you can have more information and more community for like, hey, I got together and I beaded with my grandkids today, or hey, we made memory wire things. Let me tell you how I did in case you want to or whatever. So that's one I would I would recommend um, that you kind of check out. And it's called Curiosity and Wonder as a Facebook group. The other one is my, which she just mentioned, my Christie's Creative Neighborhood, which is the ongoing public group that I've had forever. And every first Sunday of the month, I do a Sunday live chat at, uh, it's usually 10 o'clock Pacific time. That time, Hawaiian time changes depending on um, daylight savings and all that, because we don't do that here. So it, usually if you remember 10 o'clock Pacific time, um, then over the first Sunday of the month, I'm always there. And if you're like, well, how do I remember? Go to my website and click on uh, the subscribe to my newsletter stuff, all right? And then you'll, I'll remind you as we have those coming up. Um, but that's a great place to show what you're doing. It's for all creatives, not just polymer folks. And you can show what you're making and it gets oohs and ahs. Um, but whatever tribe you're in, you know, that's what we want. Uh, but if you want more, Christy, and who doesn't, you can join my creative circle, which is like a $10 a month membership. And then we have creative chats every Sunday. So we do some yimmering and yammering and we eat chocolate at each other and then we do something creative as well. So you can uh, you can do that. Thank you for reminding me of that. And I do actually have uh, this coming Sunday, which, um, so why are we on Monday? So the Sunday that's coming right on up, which um, is uh, uh, a, a event. So it's on the 13th and it's an event called Curiosity and Wonder Workshop. And we're going to be doing a happy little monster and it's made for, it's like a $25 fee is a family fee. So whoever your creative family is, you and your sister might want to do it together. You and your grandkids, you and your friend from across the country, your, that one fee lets you bring in whoever you want. And we're going to have two live chats um, uh, in and, and create a little monster and then accessorize the monster just as a fun way of playing with 
um, polymer clays and epoxy clays and things and making something that would be really fun to share with kids. So I think think those are like the biggies to hit. But I basically go to the website, get the get on the newsletter because I yammer about all this stuff as it's coming up. So that's a good way of uh, of connecting with stuff. So anybody have any questions about any of this? Uh, I've put a bunch of the links up for you guys in the chat whenever you get to take a look through them. Um, I think the last one is, that I haven't put up that you might want to talk about is, um, well, I put up your Instagram and I put oh. the classes up, the subscription. And the, the YouTube class. channel, you probably put that up as well. Yeah, I did. So do you want to talk great. about the um, Great Bead Extravaganza? And I can put that I up. I do, because this is something you guys will find near and dear to your hearts. So we have a group online called The Great Bead Extravaganza. And it is um, a really wonderful place. There's like a dozen or more of us that are the core group of presenters. And all of us have online presences. Most of them have bead shops. Some of them even brick and mortar bead shops. Um, but uh, we all are designers and um, instructors. And once a quarter, we have an online virtual bead show. So you can go there all the time. There's always sales, there's always tutorials, there's always fun stuff. And then once, uh, once every few months, we have a weekend long bead show where each of us does a presentation and it's chock full of goodness. So I would say, please go on over there and join. There's both a page and a group. It's worth joining both of them. Um, but the activity happens in the group. So um, that's, that's an easy, the page lets you know what's going on. And then the group is where all the interaction. So please join us over there. Great folks. Is the great meat extravaganza on Facebook? Yes, it's on Facebook. Sorry. They have an Instagram presence too, but all the fun is on the um the website. So it's the great bead extravaganza. And when you when you open it up, you'll see that we have the save the date for the fall festival coming up. And then it shows the midsummer market winners. So we give away swag bag and stuff. And then you just boy, you go searching up in the in the media section in the files and the albums and stuff, and you're gonna just find all the past live chats, millions of tutorials and stuff. It's just got a lot of good stuff in there. And I have the link up in the chat there for everybody. I mean, there's just like so many things out there. I mean, we could just be on our, and we are, on our devices 24 hours a day practically and never exhaust the creativity. Hey, Paulette. I have a question. I liked your dragonfly. It was so cool. Um, could you kind of review that one more time? Because I know I've got mica. And but I wasn't quite sure, and I know gluing things to the mica, but then that rest of it I kind of lost. <laughs> right. Well, it, it basically, um, I used the mica, the sheet mica, and I sell that on my site, but you can probably get it in a number of places because you can cut it into wing shapes, right? And then I just used a super glue to glue my um rhinestones onto the surface of that. And I also used glue around the edge of the wing so that I wouldn't um they wouldn't come open over time. And then I just used a little bit of UV resin to seal everything. So once you've got everything glued on, UV resin will seal it. And then the easiest way, frankly, is to make the body out of epoxy clay. And I've got a number of YouTube freebies on how to play with epoxy clay. So jump in on any of those. In fact, I'm gonna make a note of it because Paulette, um, doing the dragonfly with those wings as a YouTube, um, uh, how to might be kind of fun, right? Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. So the YouTube channel will will show you how to play with epoxy clay, but you make a dragonfly looking body and you shove the wings in. And I just use like a little bit of toilet paper or a folded piece of paper to hold the wings into position until everything dries. Um, and the how to, I think if you go to my YouTube channel and it's at Christy Universe and she's got the link there um, and you can look it up with Christy Friesen. And I have YouTube videos all over the place on YouTube. Um, but if you go to my channel, um, Christy Universe, you'll see in, in the live section, I think I have a Q&A about using epoxy clay. And it's a lot of like, I'm, I'm going to be making some beginner's guide to epoxy clay a beginner's guide to polymer and all that stuff but in the meantime you kind of have to pick around and find it but uh but that's a nice thing to you know you might want to consider the creative circle because we do both polymer and epoxy over there and it's about half and half so there's a couple different uh ways of getting some of that info but that dragonfly is a fun little one and it's very intriguing with those clear wings yeah. isn't it yeah oh, yeah you, and i love the other slide too you had the fish um like hanging in the clear i don't know if that was resin or whatever 
And then yeah. the ball, I mean, it was just kind of cool how you, um, you- There's some you fun little tricks with ball. resin. Resin's a funky little thing, you know, so uh, <laughs> I, and I don't even do as much resin anymore, but that again would be a nice little thing to do. I'm trying to remember if I have, I believe I have, I don't know if I have that fish as a tutorial. Mm -hmm. um, good question. You'll have to dig around in there and see. I know I've got some fish in resin, but I don't know if I have that one. So I'll have to look and see if I, if I don't, I'll, I'll try to find the, the stuff and get it up in the, there soon. Cause it is, it's a, it's a good look having something going in and out of the resin like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you can get um, one thing I, I saw and I don't know if it was yours or I, I somehow I think it is because it just seems so whim whimsical, but you know, people back like you were talking uh, 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 steampunk and things like that on that kind of weird things. Like you can get those fake um, watch containers that Jim Holtz does yep. and you can always yep. like make a creature or whatever and then oh those are a wonderful thing to do like make <laughs> your little like, creature oh, inside that out, but yeah and then you yeah it. yeah so it I makes a great pendant that you can then create you know like if you're doing a necklace with multiple chains and interspersing yeah. the gears of the chains and then having that pendant you know that's made out of the the pocket watch case I mean that's a good that's a fun look and I think, didn't you have a steampunk um, booklet too? Yeah. So yeah that's that, an e-book. The dragon. Yeah. <laughs> the it's, dragon it's one. I have the dragon one. <laughs> Do you? Oh, that was my first one. And that's been the bestseller. And then the steampunkery is is, is an e-book. That's a fun one. So if you're interested in that look at all, and it talks about swelling yeah. in there too, um, which is a great, if you're doing anything grungy, metallic, aged, yeah. oxidized, that swelling is good stuff. Yeah. And it'll go over well. well. Yeah. you know, and right on over everything. So it's, it's good stuff. Yeah. I like that. I'll be doing more of that in the coming months. Once my, um, my new partner kind of works some of the bugs out of re, um, packaging the line. We're doing a little bit of experiment. So it's available as it is right now. We'll probably have some shifts in the coming months, but once that's all settled, then I'll probably do a free steampunk event. Yeah, so again, cool. another reason to join my newsletter so you know when it's coming up. Um, yeah, I have. I'm a member of your newsletter, but I um, and I I don't know if I follow the great um, whatever great beat extravaganza one. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I just started Palmer Clay about two years ago, so. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. I mean, it's, it's there's so lots of fun. So many materials are fun. And I feel like the biggest thing that I find that's the neatest is to remember that all of your materials go with other materials. So sometimes people are like, well, I do beading. I don't need to get started in another hobby. It's like, well, no, no, this is just an extension of beading. <laughs> um, which I, I polymer you have to kind of pull and stretch to make that one work with epoxy clay you don't because epoxy clay is a way of repairing putting things on other things like one of the funnest things to do with epoxy clay is you get a bag full of metal findings and rhinestones and you mix up a little bit and i like using the epoxy sculpt because you've got an hour of play time it doesn't dry real fast mm -hmm. and it does come in colors as well and you can put mica and glitter on it whatever but you just take little balls of it and you stack one finding on top of the other and angle them into its own design. And then you use little balls of it and stick your crystals on and you can create these amazing little pendants and they all, it grabs on, it holds tight. It makes a really wonderful um, uh, little assemblage out of just your, your findings, your bead caps and your oddball stuff. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's fun. So I would say definitely, if you don't do anything else, jump on YouTube and kind of look at some of my epoxy clay okay. stuff you know that that's it'll it'll bring you to new places i think thank you yeah you bet <laughs> christy there's a question about um the inspiration presentation um being uh, being able to download it as a pdf yes um, is that on your website it is something that I sell on my website, but Hannah, if you'll remember, remind me, I will just send you the PDF that, that you can give to your members. That way you don't have to buy it. Um, okay. it's, in, it's in the buy one, get one free. So if you use it as one of your freebies or something, of course you can, but I'll get you the PDF of that. So, um, oh, you great. Guys can, yeah, great. Yeah. So what we'll do with it is, um, the, the meeting notice information will go into our archive. And and yeah. uh, along with the, a link to to this meeting, um, and we'll add it oh, there. Good. Great, I'm making myself a little note too, but I know Hannah will will follow good. up on that. But yeah, All right. thank you, you, Chrissy. That way, yeah, you don't have to buy it or whatever. You can just you can just have it in your world. All right, that's excellent. Yeah. 
I absolutely will remind you. That sounds exciting. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you, ladies. I mean, uh, I'm I'm assuming it's probably time to wrap it up because you guys probably are getting tired. But I, I'm always willing willing for questions. Feel free to message me or whatever. Um, but I really enjoyed um, being able to talk with you guys. And I'm so sorry that we had that tech glitch. I, I am going to have to talk to the Zoom people and find out what's up. This is a new, this is a new thing. Um, I've done the Zoom chats quite frequently and I'm not I haven't signed up, so I have a feeling they want to get me monthly for this, and they're going to make it hard until I do, and that's Good. and that's reasonable. That's fine. Good. Christy, so, I was thinking, I was thinking that possibly it was one hour that you were on when you got kicked that out. That could be, maybe, uh, which that and, that and we be. don't have that limitation on our site, so I don't know why why it would have kicked you out. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I, I I it's very like I said, just the last time when I was um, uh, working with Rochelle and Hana to kind of see what's going on. I was having a struggle of it saying to upgrade and then it wouldn't let me. So it's obviously something I have to put some time into and make sure I get it right. So next time around, I won't cause distress. But you guys carried the ball and said nice things about me. I could hear you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you so much. This is really fun. Uh, you're welcome, Paulette. Becky has a question for you. Oh, yes. Becky. I was just going to say, we, we're used to this. We quite often have glitches. Has glitch, yeah. <laughs> but I, I appreciate that. I, yeah. I did put it in the chat, but I want to tell you personally, this well, was thank you. one of the most fun and inspirational meetings we have ever had. Aww. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. As you can tell, I think about this stuff a lot. So I love talking about it to other creatives. So I'm glad you liked it. Thanks, Becky. Oh, it was wonderful. It was great. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Well, have fun. And I will look forward to seeing some of your names and faces and artwork pop up in the, you know, uh, in my Facebook, uh, Facebook groups. I'll love to see you there. Uh, the Beat Extravaganza does not have um, a place where you can post, but you can comment and you can add things in the comments and stuff. So I will look forward to you guys there for our next online beat show anyway, if nothing else. Yeah. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. All right. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Time until we cross paths again. Aloha. Thanks. Oh, Thanks. Aloha. <laughs>